All right, Gene Deal, how's it going? Cam TV, what's going on, brother? Hey, you know, just out here grinding, man. I, you know, I see you out here doing your thing too. Staying busy. Yeah, I'm staying busy, but I don't know about that grinding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought All I was right. retired. <laughs> I thought we would start with some of the latest news about Diddy going on, man. And that is in the lawsuit from Little Rob, which, you know, I was going to get into a little bit later, but in this lawsuit, Little Rob suggests that he told him that he was the one that shot up the club in 1999 and actually got away with it. And, you know, a lot. it was kind of controversial because the lady who actually got shot in the nose actually came out and started accusing it of being Diddy that actually did it. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Is there, you know, well, what do you remember from that time? Well, we were off. Well, I, I was one of the securities that was off that week because him and Jennifer Lopez were going to the Mediterranean to take a trip on a yacht. So I had got a call from Paul, one of the securities, and he had said that, Oh, Gene Puff is coming back to the city. You got to get him. I like, no, nah, I'm off. I hung up the phone. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Wolf Jones then was at the club having fun. Puff had called him and, and asked Wolf, what were they doing? They said they had to show a girl named one of Puff O, uh, the person who did the city college with him, named uh, the shit city college events and a lot of parties. Her name was Jessica Rosenberg or Bloom. She was giving she was giving the party at the show. Uh that's the Manhattan the Manhattan Club or whatever like that, I think. So not um she um Puff decided to come all the way from the Hamptons to the club. You know, so I guess Sean, who used to hang out with Wolf, he was on his way to the party too. And this is a story that Wolf is telling me about what happened. And uh Puff came in, he bought up the bar, and he got he was close to some dudes that were from Brooklyn. And one of the dudes said, uh, said something to Puff about, we got money too, and threw money in his face. And whatever else happened, everything broke out, and some shooting occurred. Now, the girl who said that Puff shot her, if she had told the police and the police was doing their job the correct way. And let me just tell you something about NYPD. NY, I can't see NYPD not giving Puff uh, um, a ballistics test where they uh, swab his hands and swab his clothes and see that how far, how close he was or did he shoot the weapons? Because that's what they usually do when there's a shooting and they catch the people right then and there. You know what I'm saying? Puff was caught about 10, 15 minutes after the shooting in the car in a, in a chase. So if he had shot a gun, then they should have done a ballistic test. If she said Puff shot her like she said she said that night, it should have been a ballistic test done on him that would have proved that he was in the vicinity or he shot a weapon because the gunpowder would have been on his clothes and would have been on his hands. So I don't see how he got away with that. And NYPD is not like LAPD, <laughs> whereas that they don't give a who you are. Little Wayne went to jail, did three years for a shooting. Plastico Burden, for having a gun. Plastico Burgers went to jail, a football player, for shooting himself. So, to get back to your question, I know she's making statements that Puff shot her. I don't see, I would like to see the police who did her questioning at the hospital 
report. I would like to see those report and see what's in those. You, <laughs> I think yeah, uh, if she would have did that, Puff would have been going. If she would have said it then, Puff should have been going to jail then. That's actually a really good point. Out of all the stuff that I've looked into, I never seen anybody say that they did or didn't do the ballistics. But uh, from what I understand, the doctor testified that that night when she went to surgery, that she actually told the doctor that Diddy shot me in the face. Was she on any anesthesia? Oof, I, I couldn't even tell you. But See, that ballistics thing is like, that's kind of hard to ignore because I know they would have done ballistics too. But I, I never, I haven't seen anybody talk about that at all. Right. It's crazy. Uh, anytime there's a shooting, and the police right there, they're gonna swab your hands. They're gonna swab your clothes. I just can't see them not doing that. But if they didn't do it, that was a miscarriage of justice right there, that they didn't do it. And why? If she made yeah. that statement. Because if she made that statement to the doctor, one thing I know about NYPD, somebody was following that ambulance to the hospital to get a statement from the girl. And I would like to know what kind of weapon it was because I pretty much knew what kind of gun Puff had. <laughs> yeah, well, she did sue Diddy and she got $1.8 million from him. But he was in an altercation that caused her to be injured. She should have sued her, him, the club, the other people that was involved, everybody. Everybody that had some money should have got sued. I, I don't know if she sued anybody else, but she definitely did sue Diddy. And she said she's been getting harassed every since from it. She said she got like seven flat tires in, I think I want to say like 2015. Like she still, she still gets harassed by him, she says, because she feels like she's the only person that ever got some money from him. Uh, yeah, nine people died at City College, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he was involved in that. And I don't think they got that much or anything. Uh, during the trial, you know, one thing that, that really stuck out was Shine was, is accusing Diddy of basically snitching on him, saying that Diddy's lawyers called a witness that said that Shine shot his gun and shot his gun first, which was kind of, you know, th this lawyer, uh, not lawyer, uh, the witness that worked for the club actually helped clear Shine, I mean, helped clear Diddy by saying that they tackled Diddy when it happened so the, and that Diddy didn't have a gun. But at the same time, this person is also testifying saying that they seen Shine shoot a gun, and this was the witness that Diddy's lawyers called to the stand. Well, what what's happening was is that Diddy had, uh, Puff had security uh, going around finding witnesses to testify what they saw, and they would tell him and his lawyers first, and then they would send those witnesses to the DA. You understand? I said this plenty of times before. They would send those witnesses to the DA. And after they get their testimony and what they saw, if they felt that it was, <laughs> whether it was against Sean or for Sean, will help Sean or it will hurt Sean, they would send those witnesses to the DA. And that's how the DA got those witnesses. They came through Puff Camp. So you felt like Diddy set Shine up to take the fall? I felt like he and like Wolf wasn't involved in that sh I wasn't involved in this, but it was certain people in security that was finding witnesses, bringing it back to Puff, telling Puff, oh, they was at the club, they saw it. They they know what was hap they know what happened. Puff would take that information, give it to his lawyers, the lawyers would interview them first, then they would get those witnesses to the DA. That's what he did.
Shine know he did that. Shine was told he was doing that. Shine even came out in some statements and said that we was had the same charge, the same crime. We had this at the it was a crime done. We had the same charges. And you was given the DA witness. Shine even Shine know that's what happened. Yeah, Shine was talking about it for a while. You know, you know, Shine did his time. He did his 10 years. And when he came out, you know, he got a million dollars and then never released the album. A lot of people think that that was like kind of Diddy's way. He, he didn't get the money from Diddy, but he got it from L.A. Reid, Def Jam. A lot of people think that that money came from Diddy for doing the 10 years. I remember when Shine came home from, from jail. They released Shine, right? And then they deported him to Belize, said he couldn't come back to the United States. So he goes back to Belize. And do you remember when Def Jam signed them to a record deal? They gave him what, $8 million? million dollars. How much? A mil L.A. Reid gave him a million dollars. All right, so L.A. Reid gave him a million dollars to put out an album, and the album never came out. I knew that when L.A. Reid went to give him that million dollars, that that was Puff giving him the money, but he had to give it through L.A. Reid. They never so intended, they never tended on giving him an album. If they would have gave him a million dollars for an album, wouldn't we have heard an album? I don't know, man. I, 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 um, I can't say that I was pri <laughs> was it, privy to that part of the uh, uh, contract with Shine. I, I don't know, but you know, I don't think Shine was that great of a rapper when he came out anyway. He didn't come out with no material that was ready to go to make songs. Now, during this time, did you guys ever get any like death threats or anything going on? Or, or you know, what was like, you know, were you guys on high alert? What, what was the security like at the time? Well, you know, you're talking about when the Shine and, and Puff thing was going on? Yeah. Puff, was try Puff uh, met Shine one time in front of Trump, Trump Towers. And Shine had the tour bus with his picture on it. And Puff told me, yo, Gene, don't let nobody take a picture with me and Shine, because I hate this mother. And I was like, bro, you on trial with him? You hate him? What, what are you talking about? He said, Gene, just don't let nobody take a picture. I said, ain't nobody going to take no pictures, bro. Go ahead and do your thing. So him and Shine, they had a conversation. They were talking. Then Puff went on the tour bus for a minute. Then he came off. And we just rolled off. And I said, yo, what's up? He said, man, and Puff was telling me, yo, he got me in all this bullshit. So I don't believe when Puff said that to me, I don't believe Puff would have shot a gun up in the club because Wolfman was there. But I don't know why or I can't take away from what the witness said, she saw it. If she said she saw it, she saw it. If she said he did it, she has to prove that he did it. But he may be like that now, but back then he wasn't like that where he was going to take a gun out and shoot up in the club, especially when he had Wolf and some of the people that was there at the time. That's what they there for. That's what I was kind of wondering, too, because Wolf and him, you know, Wolf actually got charged, too. Wolf, Wolf had to beat the, some of the same charges. You know, Wolf was in the car with Diddy when they were when they were taken off. Mm -hmm. You know, when the alleged uh, bribery happened, where the, the, the it driver wasn't no alleged. was. It wasn't no alleged. alleged. That, was, that was a true thing. They offered the driver to take the gun and everything, and they was gonna give him fifty thousand dollars. He, you know, whatever. He was, he was on. He was, he was telling the truth, bro. That was, that was no alleged to nothing. That was the truth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, him and Wolf had some of the same charges, the bribery and the gun charges. Right. And you know, as, as we know, they both were found innocent of those. They was gonna be Plus found innocent anyway, no matter what, <laughs> because. Uh, 
people, Sean know this to be true too. They came to Sean and there's a girl that was on the witness. She was a, no, she was on the jury. They had got to her and she wanted $20,000 per person and she was going to make sure all three of them walked. Damn. Yep. Okay. And that's real talk. Sean know that to be true. Sean wouldn't get, Sean wasn't going to do it. Puff could have did it. Puff could have gave up the whole 60000 because he was going to pay Wolf part of it. So why, but because of Sean, he wasn't going to give Sean part of it. I don't know why. Do you think that Diddy kind of did this because he felt like somebody had to take the fall? Well, that's, you got to realize these lawyers know each other some way, somehow. When they got all, they, when they got the discovery, the New York lawyers, the prosecutors are going to say, you know, somebody got to take a fall for this. We're not letting this happen. You understand? And Sean got caught with his weapon on him. Puff knew Sean had to take the fall. Wolf would have taken, if Wolf would have got charged with anything, he was a three-time loser. His, the, the, the uh, sentence that he would get would have to be 25 to life. Because he, he had already had uh, uh, gun charges, drug charges, all that stuff like that. He'd have been a three, he would have been a three-time loser. So, the less that he could have got in that type of situation was 25 to life or 20 to life or something like that. So Sean had to be the one to take the fall because Puff was not going to go to jail. Not at all. Okay. So here's where things kind of get, you know, kind of, kind of wild, man. So the dude scar did a written statement to the police saying that Diddy and him had hits out on each other and that he wouldn't uh, take the stand against Diddy because he was scared for his life and that that's why he didn't testify. Well, I would think he wouldn't testify because Scar was a gangster. And gangsters do gangsters things, right? And if he would have got on a stand against Diddy, then would he have been a gangster? Hell no. Nah. They wouldn't look at him that way. J-Lo was there that night with Diddy. Mm -hmm. And Shine says in a few different things, two different interviews, that he saved their life. Well, I look at it like this, is that I don't believe none of them was trying to shoot nobody because all the shots ricocheted off the stuff that was in the ceiling. <laughs> you get it? The people who got yeah. hit was because they got hit from things that was ricocheting, the bullets that was ricocheting from the things from out the air, the lights and the the uh, the uh, the structures. So if they they was at close enough proximity, if they was trying to kill each other or shoot each other, they would have got somebody would have got shot. Really, most of the shots were from. Gun, gun, gun bullets ricocheting off the ceilings and shit like that. I think one security person probably got shot in the leg. Didn't you read that? I didn't see or any, hear anybody talk about no paperwork about that. But I, in an interview, Shine says that he shot the guy that pulled a gun on him, and that he shot the guy in the shoulder. When yeah. you know, when like he was like, yo, when I seen dude reaching for his gun. 
I pulled out my gun and shot him. That's that was in the interview that Shine said. Okay. Would Puff get harassed like this when he would go out, or was this just like a, a just you know a, an off situation? We never around anyone. Uh, we never allowed anybody to get that close to him when we go out because we have our own section. But because this was something prompt to that Puff just popped up with Jennifer Lopez, it was no security there to have it set up, whereas that he have his own section so individuals don't get that close to him. Now, anytime we went to certain places, we had a section and we didn't allow individuals to get close to Puff. Yeah, this seems like a really kind of a crazy situation, you know, being that, you know, I, I guess it all started over a drink being spilled. So, you know, Puffy accidentally bumped into somebody, spilled the drink. They started arguing. Shine actually knew these guys. You know, they were from Brooklyn, too. It, it, it just seemed like a really and then, you know, like like you were saying earlier, you know, one of them threw money on Puff. Like, oh, we got money to just seem like a. You know, a kind of situation that wouldn't really happen to someone like Puff. Well, if uh, if the right, if the security was there like it's supposed to be when he's at a function at a place like that, things like that usually don't happen. But because, yeah, like I what said, what happened with Wolf? I, I would think Wolf would have been the one. But Wolf, you know, see what what, what people don't understand is is that. Wolf was not really security. Wolf was one of the individuals that gave bad boy they starting money. He was getting a security check for social security reasons and all that. You know what I mean? As if he worked security. Yes, Wolf was a... He was a gangster. But... Wolf wanted me to quit my job. Well, they wanted me to quit my job and be full-time security for Puff. You understand what I'm saying? Instead of having them on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sunday stuff like that, they wanted me to be there full. Wolf wanted me to be there. Paul wanted me to be there. And I was like, nah, I'm staying, I'm keeping my state job. Y'all niggas is crazy. Y'all child mine. We're not doing that. So Wolf was not really security, but he's security because who he is. He didn't have to work no, he didn't have no, no schedule to work. Wolf was just with Puff at the parties and at the events. You know what I mean? But Wolf was part yeah. of the crew that gave Puff that startup money. Okay, so then they didn't really have any security with him that night. Not That's really. crazy. Damn. Okay, well, this situation... I believe caused J Lo and Diddy to break up. Along with some other stuff. A along with some other stuff. And she actually kind of left him for a backup dancer. You know. How how did Puff take that or you know what was going on during that time? Man, it was so much crazy things going on. And uh Puff was using her personal assistant to try to find out wherever Jennifer was at. He was sending like a hundred dozen roses. He was trying to get Luther Vandross to sing for her, you know, sing to her. He was doing everything to try to get her back. You know what I'm saying? But she wasn't going for her. I think Jennifer, you know, Jennifer mother didn't like Puff. So when your mother don't like somebody, you know, and Jennifer was real close with her mother and her parents. Her father used to go to baseball games with us and everything like that. But, uh, I think it had a lot to do, you know, her mother not liking her. Her mother, you know, felt her life was in danger for being around somebody like Puff. And she wasn't going to uh, risk her relationship with her family by dealing with this kid anymore. Mm. Uh, you know, he spent kind of, he spent kind of years trying to get her back. Uh, he made songs about her and everything. Yeah, he, like... He always had Kim there for him on the side, but like Jennifer, 
when she dipped on him, it kind of messed him up. Like, yeah, like, I mean, like, he would get out the car and we'll be on 17th Street and we'll walk all the way up to 74th Street to his house. <laughs> I was like, yo, it was crazy, man, the way she, you know, had him and he wanted to get her back, but she wasn't messing with him. You know, Shine came out and everybody kind of compared him to Biggie. They said he sounded like Biggie. He had a lot of Biggie swag. You know, did you guys ever get any hate about that? Or, you know, were there people around that might not have liked what was going on? Shine got a lot of hate from Junior Mafia behind that. D rock them. They was really trying to hurt him. They was having shootouts. They was getting into brawls, everything. If it wasn't for Wolf bringing Shine close to him, it would have been mad issues, you know, with Junior Mafia and Shine. Puff couldn't handle it. So uh, Shine made Wolf like, uh, like a manager uh, over his project or whatever like that. So, D Rock and start giving Shine a pass. But because of that Biggie stuff, or he sounded like Big, or they thought he was trying to take Big, uh, like, be like Big, they was going at him. Mm. Shine wasn't safe around Bad Boy. Okay, well, I think the biggest news with Puff going on is that. Little Rod actually filed a lawsuit against him, accusing him of all types of stuff from touching him to spiking drinks and sex workers and Diddy trying to groom him and, you know, allegedly sharing a video of Stevie J having sex with a man to try to persuade him to to do things and you know, that this is okay and this is just how it's done in the music business. You know, what is your, uh, you know, first initial thoughts when you've seen and heard about this latest lawsuit? You know, it's crazy that everybody in the world can have an opinion about what Puff do or what Puff did but me. Everybody gets, like, upset when I talk about him. When I knew him for years. You understand what I'm saying? He was part of the same gang, our crew. He went on and did Bad Boy. He went on. Uh, I didn't bodyguard him. I've done security for him. You know what I'm saying? Been in his house, been, you know, been around him. We ate off the same plates, you know, here and there. So everybody get upset when I talk about him, maybe because I did security for him. But not only that, it's the fact that we was cool at, outside the security. So I can have my opinion on what I think. The puff that y'all see now wasn't the puff that was back in 95, 96, 2003, 2004. You know, he's a He's he he he's the puff that's that's allegedly I guess or like these people are saying that's on drugs that's using cocaine that's using uh, uh, other drugs that's using pills and stuff like that. When I was around Puff, he was taking those pain pills for his wrists. He got hooked on those. He would drink champagne. He wouldn't smoke no weed. He wouldn't smoke no cigarettes. I seen him on uh, one of the Instagram posts or whatever like that. He was walking, smoking a cigarette. I don't know that puff. So, you know, him having these charges and these people are saying these things about him, that's their personal experience. That's what they see. Now, I've seen some of the things that match some of the stuff that he's saying that, you know, maybe having a bunch of girls, you know, using women, 
to get at guys and everything like that. Okay. But this this addiction and using these drugs and like I I I I don't know that puff like that. Okay. Now what about all the the extra stuff that he was talking about that he's a, a, accusing Diddy of, you know, like the spike drinks and Yeah, that's workers. what I'm saying. Like like you know, he never did that around me that I knew about that one. You understand what I'm saying? He never did that. Uh that that men and having a lot of women or 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 having sex things like that with men and women together, yeah. I've seen Puff play that rock star role where, you know, him and another girl and a guy and other guys, they be all in the room, naked doing their thing or whatever like that. I, I know him from that. You understand? Uh but all that three men waking up in the bed with three men and all y'all naked, I don't know that puff like that. Right, that's what little Rob accused him of, right? Or that he woke up one night. Yeah, he woke up and he was in the morning. bed naked with him. And and two other men. Yeah. That's brother love. <laughs> 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 that ain't puff. That's brother love. Well, also in this paperwork, they they indirectly like they they make it so obvious that it's Usher. They redact his actual name, but then below that they put he just performed at the Super Bowl. Yeah, I and, caught a lot of flack know. about that, Cam. I caught a lot of flack about that because our people always want to blame the accuser and not the abuser. Uh, back in the day, I'd say like in '91 after the City College incident, I stopped doing security for uh, Puff, right? Stop dealing with him. But he was still part of the same gang that was our crew in Harlem, and he used to come back and forth with us, go to parties, you understand, boat rides, uh, uh, the same gang picnic, all those things like that. He still was a same gang member. So, you know, me being one of the big dogs of the same gang, I still... Seen him, had association with him. We was cool. I just didn't do any work for him no more after that city college incident when nine people died. So now, this was back in 91. Usher Raymond the Fourth. He was born in 78, and they said that Puff was a mentor to him in... He was 14 years old, something like that. He was living with Puff, whatever, like that. I, uh, that was Usher, back. Yeah, that was Usher. Usher uh, Raymond Usher the said, uh, Usher went on the Howard Stern show and said that he lived with Usher at age 13 and he went to Diddy Camp. Right. Now, check this out. If it was 13, this had to be around 92 then, right? 92, 93, right? He's 78. He was born in 78. So this is about okay. 92, 93. I wasn't even dealing with Puff. I wasn't doing no security for him or nothing. But I hear that we hear, not only me, people in the street, people in the industry, that Puff had an incident with a kid. And the kid was rushed to the hospital in Scarsdale, New York. Now that incident, I always tell people, I let Mr. Raymond, I let Usher explain the incident. I let his mother explain this incident because I didn't know it was Usher until Usher's first album came out and he was about 17 years old. We heard about the incident, but people didn't know it was Usher till his mother made a statement about Diddy and his album came out, which was two or three years later. Now, I didn't see Usher again until I was in Atlanta in about 2002 or 2003 with Diddy. 
We was at the Swiss Hotel, right? And Diddy was in the room with Kim. He comes out. He has a girl in the living room where in the presidential suite, they got the piano, a big table. He got a, so it's a girl sleeping on the couch in the living room. I'm in the whole nother room on the other side. So it's early in the morning. I come out. This girl is on the couch. Puff comes out the room. This girl start giving her a fellatio, giving him a fellatio. This girl is one of Keith Sweat's old baby, baby mothers. I mean, yeah, baby mama. You understand? Seen her before and everything like that. So Puff goes in the room after she finish. She lays back down on the couch. The doorbell ring. Usher comes in. I open the door. It's Usher. I haven't. I know who Usher is now. He's 20 some years old at this time now. This is about 2003. 2002, 2003. I said, what up, Usher? He said, yo, Puffy. I said, yeah, he in the room. He said, yeah. Uh, uh, he said, "Is uh, I forget the girl name here because he was looking for her. I said, yeah, man. She over there on the couch, man. She just got through uh, Boof and Puff, just like that. Yeah, she just got through Boof and Puff, man. Get out of here. Usher, go wake the girl up. She gets up, and they hug, and he kiss her in the mouth. And I was like, my man, you nasty, yo, man. I, I see y'all later. And they walk out the, they walk out the, he takes her out the, the hotel room. She goes with him, right? People get mad at me because I tell that story. You understand what I'm saying? But I didn't know Usher was the one that had to be rushed to the hospital until people around Puff that was around Puff at the time told me it was Usher. You understand? But Usher Raymond, the fourth, that means it's a third, there's a second, and there's a first. He got a mama. He got a cousin. He got a second cousin, first cousin, second cousin. He might got even a kissing cousin. If his family members way back then didn't do nothing, when they knew what happened to him and why he was rushed to the hospital, how do they expect other people to be responsible for what they didn't do? They wanted their kid to be a star. He a star. He a mega star. So whatever happened to him then, they may not want it to be known. But they knew something happened enough that his mother had to come get him out of Diddy camp. But after the hospital situation, Usher got sent home. Usher went home. His mother came and got him. That's what I heard. And he went back to Atlanta. But this is 92. I didn't go back and start dealing with Puff until 95 after they had the problem with Suge Knight. So from 91 to 95, I wasn't messing with right, Puff. And, that, and that's would have been that would have been when Usher was around him right. at a young age. But still, I'm I'm still Big Gene. I'm still the dude that's giving parties, doing security for Certain people at Uptown Records, Tim Dog, I'm still Big Gene. So I'm going to hear stuff and I'm going to know stuff. But these people want to blame the accuser to let them know what went down. Yo, listen to me. I ain't got no shame in my game of letting y'all know what happened and what this dude did. Dude did this dude did a lot of people dirty. And he's getting his karma back. He did a lot of people dirty. You understand what I'm saying? Well, a lot of people believed that, you know, Usher was groomed by Diddy. 
He wasn't only drew by Diddy. He was uh, groomed by L.A. Reid, the rest of them too, man. Because they knew what happened. Then they came out and brought him back. And all of a sudden, he's getting all the great tracks. He's getting all the songs. They making him into this star. Even though he may have been abused. They seem to be pretty good friends. Well, they probably is. I mean, they did a lot of work together, man, throughout their whole career. You know, Puff was Bruh. early, early in his career. Puff and Usher were working together when Usher was just a kid all the way up. I mean, you know, I, I think there's videos from not too long ago when they were they were together. And, you know, Puff is making jokes about how they used to wrestle for the Frosted Flakes in the morning. And Yeah, I bet they did. You know. Somebody frosted you know, some somebody frosted somebody flakes. <laughs> Without the milk. <laughs> what do you think it is that keeps Usher from coming out or saying anything? Because, yo, dog, he it, it's it's you gotta realize in that industry, a lot of people are uh, stand back and say, well, it happened to me. That's how some of them people pay their dues. And the people who don't go down like that don't be as great as the ushers, as the ditties. It's a way of passage to certain people in the entertainment business. With all these people coming out against Diddy, do you think more people are going to come out? It's a lot of people that, you know, see, you got to realize is that everybody think, oh, everybody's coming out now. It's a lot of people that wanted to bring stuff out long time ago, but the lawyers wouldn't take it. The lawyers wouldn't deal with it. Cassie opened up a floodgate. For lawyers to look at people' cases now and say, yeah, we might could get some money out of that. We might could do that. Yeah, he did abuse you. Nobody really cared at first. But now they see that a lot of this stuff may have some truth to it and the people can be paid for it. They're coming out. I seen that you've actually talked to some victims behind the scenes. Yep. I mean, without naming any names, you know, what all can you tell me about that? Well, I don't want to talk about what they uh, confided in me, but it's a lot of stuff that has been going on. And um, like there's tapes that are running around with women there's tape that is running around with women and they want to get a hold to hold, hold of those tapes so they could bring them, you know, to the lawyers. And those tapes do exist. But it's going to be hard for them to get because a lot of people don't want them to know that they was in those tapes and they was a part of it. But it is what it is. Speaking of tapes, Little Rod says he has a ton of video footage and that Diddy had him following him with a camera, doing all types of these illegal activities. Was there cameras around a lot back in the day? Nah. You know, back in the day, they didn't do that. They didn't allow people to take pictures, Harley. You know, so we didn't have those cameras like that. There was a few cameramen, Alex and this uh, Spanish dude, they was allowed to take certain pictures, but only when you told, they, they asked you to. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So, okay, there's, well, there's footage. There's footage. 
I have a tape of the party that uh, Diddy gave at the shine was convicted. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, Diddy threw a party for for him beating his case. I take it. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything on there, or it's just a normal, just a normal party? <laughs> just a normal party. <laughs> I mean, you know, was this just a normal party or was this like a Diddy party? It's a normal party. It's a normal <laughs> Diddy party. Because you got to realize he was normal back then. He was, he was, okay. he, he was the normal Diddy back then. Now he brother love. <laughs> okay, well, I guess there was a, a situation with Diddy and a rapper, and they were in a hotel room for hours? Who's that? That, that you kind of talked about? I believe it was Ja Rule. No, bro. No, no. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Yo, Cam. Diddy had Sarah and Sarah girlfriend. Right? He was trying to uh, use them to go at Ja Rule. So Ja Rule could go at Jay-Z. He was trying to set Ja up and try to have those girls, you know, throw themselves on Ja Rule in the hotel room and they was all in the room together. When I got into an altercation with a guy who tried to get in the room, Puff and Ja Rule ran out. And when they ran out because of the, the, the commotion, they was grabbing towels because they was naked when they came out. So he was in there. They both was in there with women. Okay, I see. I kind of seen you touch on this a little bit, but there was, you know, with the whole Wolf and BMF situation. Well, is there anything you could talk about with that? Yeah, I'll talk about that. Um, Wolf wanted to move on and started a club. Him and a guy, Mike Sally, was going to invest in this club. It was three, two, one. They was going to buy in Miami. It's where J Lo had gave Puff a birthday party at. So Wolf wanted his money back from Puff. Puff had promised him once he do a Universal deal or whatever that he was going to give Wolf his three hundred thousand back. Um, Ock had once said it was about five hundred thousand. But I think 300000 of that money was Wolf either because he was spending money on supporting the other two guys who got convicted to, uh, they got nine, sixteen of life sentences for conspiracy of selling drugs. So Wolf was spending his money on helping them, their families and everything like that. And the money he helped give to Puff to hold Craig Mack and Big from going to somebody else and being a part of Bad Boy until he got to deal with Clyde Davis. So now, Wolf, Puff became real good friends with Meech from BMF. And we had went to the fight and I wrote this, I wrote this, and I talked about it in my book, in my second book. We had went to the fights down in uh, uh, Detroit. And we was on a tour bus with Meech. And Meech told Puff he didn't have to worry about nothing, nobody, or he was good from this point on. Whenever he's going somewhere, just let him know. Because Puff was, Meech was getting into the music business. And Puff was opening some doors for him. You know what I'm saying? Just like uh, he made an uh, introduction to with Puff, I think, to Jacob the Jeweler. You know, and you know the BMF cats, all they did have a lot of jewelry. You know what I'm saying? So Puff was opening doors for me to get into the music business. So one day we was in the office. This is about a week or two before a week or so, a week or two before Wolf got killed, Puff told me, Puff told Wolf, I don't need you no more. 
And we was like, you don't need me no more. He said, yeah, Meech said I don't need you no more. So, uh, Wolf said, yo, them ain't all what you think they are. He said, listen, I don't have to even have you around me no more. And when the universal, I do this universal deal, I'm going to give you your money. Yo, and Wolf was like, yo, I'm going to be around as much as I want to I, I wanna be around. And I'm going to show you they ain't all that. A week or two later, they had the altercation in the club. And in that altercation in the club, according to Wolf mother, the investigators told her Wolf, I mean, uh, Meech phones were tapped. And in his, in, his, in his phone, he made a call to Puff, telling him to call Wolf and straighten Wolf out like, yo, you know, call Wolf. Let him know, man, you know, this don't mean, you know, get your boy. Whatever Wolf Meech said to him, get your boy. This is according to Wolf's mother. And the investigators told Wolf's mother that Puff told her that, that, that his response was, oh, I can't stop him. I, 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 can't, I, I, can't, I can't control what he do, man. Y'all do what y'all got to do. And Wolf ended up dying okay. that night. Getting killed by the dude that he introduced to BMF. Damn, that's kind of crazy. Damn. I think you said you introduced Diddy to Jacob, the jeweler? No, or, no, or, no, 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 no. I didn't say that. I said that I think Diddy introduced Meech to Jacob, the jeweler. That's crazy because Jacob got caught in the BMF Rico also for allegedly concealing uh, the money like like they were buying chains from Jacob and Jacob wasn't reporting who he was getting the money from or he wasn't reporting the money at all during during the investment. So he actually got in trouble too. Mm -hmm. But Diddy crazy. didn't get in trouble for making the introduction. Diddy didn't get in trouble for making the introduction. Nope. Well... I guess there was a situation where Tupac found out Jay-Z had a show in Las Vegas. Right. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, I don't know how Pac found out that Jay-Z had a show, but Jay-Z was not coming out that room. He had to call Chaz, which Chaz called Big D. Big D called Eric B. Eric B and them called Suge Knight, and they called... Uh, uh, and Suge said, yo, man, that ain't me. That's Pac with his wild ass. And Suge Knight gave, told Pac to give Jay-Z a pass so he could go do his concert or his show because Jay wasn't coming out that room, you know, <laughs> to do nothing. Do you know why Tupac was so mad at Jay-Z? I don't, I can't say why he was mad at him, bro. But you know, uh, I think Jay had did that song with Big, right? Was Pac alive when he did that song with Big? Brooklyn Finest or whatever? Man, the part that people are saying Pac might have been mad about was the part where Biggie kind of made a reference to Pac where he's like, two Pacs, get it. If Faith get pregnant, she'll probably have two Pacs. Get it? Two Pacs. And so, yeah, this would have been out because... The album came out in June, June 25th, 1996, was the day The Reasonable Doubt was released. Yeah, so that uh, the Reasonable Doubt came out June 1996? Yes, Reasonable, Reasonable Doubt came out June 1996. All right, so then that would get Pop, Pop would be mad. He did a song with Big. Remember Pop said that uh, he came out there with the Hawaii silky fame or something like that. <laughs> yeah, he started going in on Jay. He also, from what I understand, took shots at Jay at the end of Hit Him Up. But during that part, the mic short-circuited, so I guess they just kind of cut it out. If, right. if you listen to it, you can still hear it on the internet. Now, I've seen you touch on this before about Suge starting a distribution company where Irv Gotti 
Jay Prince and Dame Dash. Right. Can you touch on that a little bit? Right. Um, Suge Knight wanted us to keep, uh, I guess, the money into the black business, you know, with these record labels. I think Suge was like, when it came to business, he was a genius, you know, because he was like trying to get Irv, Jay Prince, uh, Dame Dash, who else? Uh, it was somebody else. Eric Beatnam. He was trying to get them to get their own. They all come together and start their own publishing company. You know what I mean? Yep. Publishing, distribution of our own music. And when uh, Puff and Jay got a whiff of that information, you know, they took it to the handlers, and I guess they was telling them this can't happen. And that's when all the other black labels and stuff, the FBI started running in, kept getting up information, uh, drugs and everything. And, and uh, who else was that? Um, Jimmy Henchman. Then that's when all the drugs and all this other stuff started being, you know, the FBI started investigating all these labels for all this other bullshit when Suge tried to unite those labels in order to get uh, distribution in a publishing company. Mm, damn. And there are there, there is proof that Kirk Burroughs had of that him and Puff taking information to the FBI. So Puff was that mad about it? Damn. Well... I guess the handlers was that mad about it because they knew if those companies, you talking about Violator, you know, or though any of those companies, if they start, all those companies with big labels, if they start doing their own distribution, their own publishing, what are these other companies going to get? It would cut a lot of people out, that's for sure. No doubt. So... I guess there was a, a situation with 50 Cent where he was on a plane or you ran into him when he was on a plane? Nah, nah, nah. Me and 50 was riding a plane together. We was going to uh, Vegas. Okay. This before he, well, had, all... this, this before he had got shot. Oh, okay. Be oh, before he got shot. Okay. Yeah. This before he had got shot. So I guess you guys ended up at a party with Supreme? Right. Um, I didn't really know that 50 and Premium was beefing like that. You know what I'm saying? Me and 50 had a conversation about him and Ja and why Ja was beefing at him and everything like that. Or why they had a um, some kind of misunderstanding or whatever like that. And uh, when we got off the plane, uh, I had asked 50, uh, are you good with uh, holding one of my girlfriends? And she, she, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good with that. So uh, we was just chilling at the party and Irv Gottingham had rolled up <laughs> in a limousine and nobody got out but Preem because they were supposed to be going to uh, Chad's party. So nobody got out but Preem and Preem was at the door and 50 was just mean mugging him and I ain't know why he was mean mugging him. You know what I'm saying? So Preem was telling me, yo, man, tell Chaz that we not coming to the party. We finna go over here on the strip or whatever like that. And we'll talk to him tomorrow. And um, 50 just was leaning on the barricade, just, just like as if he was waiting for one of those cats to come out the car. I didn't really know they had a beef like that. And, uh, Preem left. So I went up to tell Chaz. I said, yo, Chaz, Preem down there. And uh, I'm wondering uh, why they ain't coming to the party. He said, they not coming up. I said, nah. He said, they going someplace else. And him and uh, 50 was just mean mugging each other. And he said, yo, yeah. I said, uh, he said, what 50 at now? I said, he's still down there. 
He said, yeah, he all right? I said, yeah, he all right. I gave him one of my girlfriends. Chas was like, yeah, you gave him what? <laughs> As he, I said, yeah. He, he, you know, he, I gave him one of my girlfriends. She's chilling with him. She said, yo, get that back from him. That boy a loose cannon, man. I was like, what's wrong? He said, yo, they got, they got, they got beef. I was like, oh. So uh, I didn't get it back from 50, you know. I just let him hold it for the rest of the night. And then after the night, I had got it back from him. Was that your first time meeting 50? Nah, 50 was over in the studio. You got to realize 50 used to be at the studio, Chaz Studio, Black Hands. So I would see him up in the studio and everything. That was the first trip I ever went to uh, with, with 50 on. We stopped in St. Louis. My brothers and them met him and everything like that. But that's the first trip I went with 50 on. I think it was 50 Antonio. 50 says he did some writing for Puff. Yeah. He used to be able to write 50. Yep. Did you see a lot of that? Like, did you see him in the studio? I've seen a lot of people write for uh, Bad Boy, but uh, i never seen 50 over there writing for him. What was your first thoughts when you first met 50? Did he, like... Did he have that reputation even back then? Nah, like, you got to realize is that I was like the big homie. You get it? They was up and coming. They was trying to be somewhere. So they know all the shit that I was going through, all the people and all the rappers I've been around. And I was opening doors for people for Chaz and Black Hands and everything like that. You know, like, when they go to clubs, or they go to parties, they always have me there first with them because I knew everybody. When they was going to some people in the industry, I could open their doors because I knew people at Sony, Arista, I knew people at the, at the, at the, uh, at the labels because I had ran around with Puff for a few years. You know what I mean? So I was the yep. I was the big homie, you know, me and this other kid named Prince for Black Hands. So I was opening doors. I was the one that made the introduction to K Slay. They didn't even know K Slay. I made that introduction to Black Hands to K Slay. Mm, okay. Yo, Cam, this trial oh, about God. to be crazy, boy. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I spoke sure. to Ke I spoke to Keefy D's son, and uh, all that shit the motherfucker told me he got beat up in jail. All that shit is lies. Oh, really? Yeah, ain't nobody touched him in jail. Aren't they facing some more charges though? Him and his son for going after uh, one of the witnesses. It's a possibility. Yeah, that's not going to look good because they're going to put that shit in this Keefe D's trial. Yeah. But he's going yeah. to beat that case, man. It's possible, man. It's, it's very possible he beats All circumstantial case. evidence. He, went, he did the best thing he could do. Trial by judge. Judge has to find the letter of the law. Follow the letter of the law. Moss, what's up, man? All right, well, Gene, man, I appreciate your time. Yo, Cam, thank you for letting me explain myself, man. You know, because like I said before, man, they always want to blame the accusers, but they never want to blame and put the blame on the abusers. And I appreciate Cam TV giving me this opportunity to tell my part of the stories of what was going on. All right? For sure, man. Salute. I'm definitely, uh, you know, glad you got that out, man. I appreciate you. Thanks, bro. All right, man. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.